Aloha. I am Dr. Elisa Kim, and this is Everyday Wellness. Today, we're joined by Dr. Kristen Coles, a naturopathic physician, and we'll be discussing the balancing hormones naturally. So thank you so much for coming on the show, and welcome. Thank you. Great. Well, I would like to continue on as a part two on the issue of the estrogen dominance, because in the part one part of it, we spoke about what the natural cycle looks like and what a normal hormones are and how they're connected to the brain. So this time we need to, I feel the need to speak about the estrogen dominance since it's so common out there. Yes, yes. So estrogen dominance, mm -hmm. like you said, it's a very common condition. I see it in, you know, nine out of 10 patients who are coming to me mm -hmm. with issues with their female hormones. Right. And estrogen dominance can appear in a couple different ways. Okay. So if you recall, we talked about estrogen and progesterone being our two key players, okay. and they need to be in a relative balance to mm -hmm. each other. Now numerically, when I run labs and measure the levels of hormones, estrogen and progesterone do not have the same numerical numbers. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the ratio of how they should be balanced is critical. Okay. Let's imagine that this is where estrogen levels should be and this is where progesterone levels okay. should be, and they should be in a balance. Okay. Estrogen dominance is one of three different scenarios. Mm -hmm. The first one is estrogen levels that are coming back that are above normal. Mm -hmm. However, progesterone is normal. Right. There's no issue with progesterone, but we have a relative increase of estrogen mm -hmm. above baseline. Okay. Okay. This is scenario one. The second scenario is estrogen can be at baseline, but we actually measure and we find that progesterone levels mm -hmm. are deficient. Mm -hmm. This is actually still an estrogen dominant condition. Because of how strong estrogen is mm -hmm. on our tissues, we talked about this estrogen receptor effect in the right. first show, estrogen has a very strong role mm -hmm. in our body. Even though what happens here is we are deficient in progesterone, right. this relative difference oh. still creates an estrogen dominant situation. Right. The third scenario is where actually we have both. We have a progesterone deficiency and an estrogen excess. Mm -hmm. So these are three ways in which estrogen can be dominant in the mm -hmm. system. Now the reason I discuss this like I do is because this is pivotal for me as a naturopath and a woman's health specialist and how I treat someone with a hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. A situation where progesterone is normal, but what we have is a very big excess of estrogen, the treatment here mm -hmm. is going to be very focused on ways to decrease estrogen effects in the body mm -hmm. And I'm going to be looking deeply into why someone is producing so much more progesterone. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, or so estrogen. much more estrogen. Right. Versus a scenario where estrogen levels are fairly normal. They're doing what they should, mm -hmm. but the progesterone is deficient. Mm -hmm. I don't actually want to decrease your estrogen levels right. in, that, in that situation. Right, exactly. I actually want to help buoy up progesterone. Mm -hmm. This is a really key point because mm -hmm. I find that a lot of um, my conventional colleagues don't discriminate in any way, shape, or form right. with this. I can very quickly get a sense of this from symptoms mm -hmm. that someone is experiencing and also from doing targeted hormonal testing. Mm -hmm. Basically, I draw levels of estrogen and progesterone and then a couple other key players as well at key points during the month. Mm -hmm. The main time that I look at hormone levels is on day 20 or 21 mm -hmm. because that's the day in a normal cycle where estrogen and progesterone levels should be at their peak. So what I'm trying to see there is estrogen too high right. or is progesterone not high enough. Right. And based on my findings, I can then you know, institute the mm -hmm. appropriate treatment, which is, is going to be more effective than just sending someone out the door with a prescription for oral hormonal birth control, which will effectively um, mask mm -hmm. any underlying condition by just giving this set dose of synthetic hormone mm -hmm. every day of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what is estrogen dominance would be the next question here. Sure. What does that even look like? 
Well, estrogen dominance is a range of different symptoms. It's anything from your run-of-the-mill PMS mm -hmm. to endometriosis mm -hmm. or development of fibroids. Mm -hmm. Estrogen is so strong, it affects almost every tissue in our body. And when we have too much of it or we just have a dominance of it, we get symptoms of PMS, which can be any symptom that arises from day 14 onward, mm -hmm. the second half of the cycle, mm -hmm. we could get things like bloating, mm -hmm. we can get food cravings, mm -hmm. we can get irritability, mm -hmm. we can get mood disorders, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, we can get breast tenderness, mm -hmm. we can get acne, skin mm -hmm. breakouts, right. we can get migraines. Mm -hmm. we c there is a number of different symptoms. Mm -hmm. We can get constipation, changes in bowel movement. Right. All of these symptoms could be due to an estrogen dominance. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we know is that PMS affects 30 to 40 percent of women right. of reproductive age. Mm -hmm. At some point in their life, 30 to 40 percent of women are going to experience some form of PMS. Mm -hmm. Any one of those symptoms or a combination of them. Right. That is clearly an estrogen dominant mm -hmm. issue. Now do I have to run labs on someone with just some, you know, PMS complaints. No, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great thing to do to get some baseline levels and right. help monitor our therapy, but there's a lot of things that we do mm -hmm. from the get-go that can actually help balance that estrogen. Mm -hmm. The sort of next question that patients ask me is wh where does this estrogen excess come from? Right. Why do I have estrogen excess? And if we've ruled out any issues with progesterone, mm -hmm. meaning it's not because of a progesterone deficiency, mm -hmm. if it's simply that we just have a lot of estrogen, mm -hmm. we have to look into a few really important places. We have to look into the diet. Right. We have to look into the gut itself, mm -hmm. and we have to look at the liver, mm -hmm. okay? The liver is where we break down our hormones. Mm -hmm. Every hormone goes through our liver, mm -hmm. and our liver has to process it, right. break it down, and then excrete it into our bowels and our right. stool. If someone is constipated or chronic, chronically sluggish bowels, a little bit of constipation that they're chronically struggling mm -hmm. with, more likely than not, they'll have a bit of estrogen dominance. Mm -hmm. As our, those hormones that were excreted sit mm -hmm. in the bowels, we actually reabsorb them. Mm. So we will actually reabsorb the estrogen that our liver worked so hard to break down and get rid of. If it doesn't get out of the body, right. we will reabsorb it. And then we will have more estrogen than we should in the system. Mm -hmm. An interesting study, actually, I think you know some of the viewers might find this fascinating, is that we've actually found that with antibiotic use, mm -hmm. we actually upregulate this um, enzyme called a beta-glucuronidase okay. in the gut, and that enzyme will actually re help you reabsorb estrogen mm. to a higher level. Right. So even people who have been on um, rounds of antibiotics mm -hmm. recently and then start having issues with their cycles right. or their periods or PMS, it can often be linked to the fact that now mm -hmm. they're reabsorbing more mm -hmm. estrogen because their bacteria in their gut right. became out of balance. They're now secreting this chemical that makes us Right. C take our estrogen back. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at a lot of different things there. Diet is a huge piece. Mm -hmm. There's a term called xenoestrogens. Right. Xenoestrogens are estrogens or molecules that look and act like estrogen on our body, mm -hmm. but they are not estrogens. Right. These are things that come from plastics. Mm -hmm. BPA, bisphenol A, a common coating found in canned food. BPA is a xenoestrogen. Right. In our body, it will bind weakly to our estrogen receptors mm -hmm. and exert mm -hmm. an estrogen-like effect on our tissues. Mm -hmm. So anytime I have people you know, ask me, you know, what's the big deal about plastics? Or what's the big deal about you know, having things in plastic? I say, well, if you're a woman, the real big deal is with your estrogens. Mm -hmm. There's a whole slew of many other issues that, that mm -hmm. I have with plastics, but if you're a woman, these xenoestrogens and the absorption through the plastic is a real thing. The worst is if you are microwaving food mm -hmm. in a plastic container. Mm -hmm. The heat from the microwave will cause a hundredfold increase in the amount of xenoestrogens that are um, taken into the food and then you're eating it. 
So, you know, really, if you're microwaving, you should be using glass right. containers only. Right. Um, so xenoestrogens mm -hmm. from plastics, big deal. Pesticides, mm -hmm. organophosphates, mm -hmm. these all have estrogen-like effects in our system. And this is where we really see, you know, progesterone levels might be normal, but that estrogen over baseline, mm -hmm. that is so often coming from the diet. Mm -hmm. Things like hormones in our, in our meat mm -hmm. and in our dairy. Right, right. That's just hormones. You're, you're getting a dose of hormones, extra hormones yes. into your system when you're eating meats that are processed with hormones mm -hmm. that are not an organic or grass-fed right. variety. Right. There's a real issue there. And, and I'll tell you, PMS is rampant. Issues like fibroids and endometriosis, mm -hmm. which we haven't touched on yet, but those are sort of the, the worser mm -hmm. effects of an estrogen dominance con condition. Right. These are I see these in a lot of women and they mm -hmm. create a lot of different health concerns. So as much as we can reduce excess estrogens from your outside sources, then at least all we have to deal with is the ones that you're making yourself. Right. 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 Well, s as things like simple things like um, the perfumes that you use for the house, mm -hmm. you know, those the plug-in, those kind of things, they yes. can be xenoestrogen. There's so many factors yes. out there and so it's almost like, you know, do we wrap ourselves in a bubble wrap, you mm -hmm. know, type of thing. But, but there are many different measures you can take at home and outside of the house to prevent you from getting as much of these exposures and um, minimize the exposures yeah. to the chemicals. And of course mm -hmm. we can't prevent everything we're being sure. exposed to, sure. and, and that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can do what we can with our right. diet and the things that we're ingesting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the rest of it, that's where natural medicine comes exactly. in. Exactly. That's where we exactly. use things, other things in mm -hmm. our diet that help break down estrogens and we exactly. use certain nutrients, which mm -hmm. I'd like to talk a little bit about. Sure. Um, just diet-wise, mm -hmm. the cabbage family mm -hmm. vegetables, brassica family vegetables, they contain a chemical compound called indoles mm -hmm. or diindole methane, mm -hmm. D-I-M. And the indoles, which are found in cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, radicchio, mm -hmm. those type of brassica family vegetables, they have high levels of indoles. And these DIM, diindole methane, it is specific for breaking down estrogens into a um, less detrimental form of estrogen. Right. So we have many different breakdowns of estrogen. We, we touched briefly on that in the first show, but there's mm -hmm. you know two compounds. There's a 2-hydroxyestrone mm -hmm. and a 16-hydroxyestrone. And the 16-hydroxyestrone has been found in higher concentrations in breast cancer tissue. Right. So we don't want that compound around. We want more of like the 2-hydroxy. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, one of the molecules that helps take it to a 2-hydroxy instead of a 16-hydroxy mm -hmm. are our indole methanes, so our DIM. Mm -hmm. We can add them in the diet. We can also take them in supplement form. And for women who have a really significant estrogen excess issue, I will use supplements mm -hmm. more than diet. I'll say, you know, mm -hmm. you need to be having broccoli or that every day. But I will also put you on a few targeted supplements mm -hmm. that help break down those estrogen pathways. Mm -hmm. Calcium deglucurate is another one. That's a specific form of calcium that also helps break down those estrogen mm -hmm. pathways. Vitamin B6, magnesium. These are some nutrients that you know you might already be taking mm -hmm. in a small amount in a multivitamin, but right. these are really significant nutrients mm -hmm. for helping with estrogen metabolism. Right. Then of course we have the world of herbal medicine. We have herbs that affect our liver. That's where we really want to go first when we're talking right. about estrogen dominance. Right. We are thinking about milk thistle. Mm -hmm. It's a great herb for the mm -hmm. liver. It, it helps your liver process through the two different wash cycles, mm -hmm. and it will very much help with your liver detoxification system. Right. Burdock root. Mm -hmm. And, and I love here in Hawaii, so many people are familiar with burdock root yeah. and they use it in cooking. They do. And mm -hmm. I say that's fabulous because mm -hmm. burdock is a great herb for the liver. Mm -hmm. And um, specifically if women have issues with excess estrogen and acne, mm -hmm. burdock is a very good herb for that because it works on the skin and it works on the liver. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, there's a whole realm of nutrients and herbs and then of course lifestyle modifications that we can use to really help switch this excess estrogen picture. Great. If we think about the estrogen dominance with the progesterone mm -hmm. deficiency picture, we're going to approach it a little differently. Okay. Okay. We're we're not really going to be so concerned about breaking down all the estrogen because estrogen levels actually look okay. Right. We, we want to keep them that way. Right. We don't want to now create a secondary problem mm -hmm. where we have less estrogen than when we started. So we really want to focus on progesterone there. Now what might these women be noticing or experiencing mm -hmm. symptom wise? Well these women are more likely to have more anxiety, mm -hmm. they are more likely to have sleep issues, mm -hmm. and they are more likely to have possibly more water retention and shortened cycles. Mm -hmm. So these are the women who might have cycles that are coming like 24 days, mm -hmm. 26 days right. on the shorter end because they don't have enough progesterone. Mm -hmm. These are also women who we might find have fertility issues. They've maybe been trying but they haven't been successful. Mm -hmm. These are more of the progesterone deficient mm -hmm. type symptoms. They also might experience PMS right. because they have a relative estrogen mm -hmm. imbalance. But in, in addition to that, they might have sleep disturbances, possibly migraines, mm -hmm. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Progesterone really is a mood stabilizer. Mm -hmm. It's very good for um, helping deal with anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's also a relaxing hormone. It helps us relax and sleep well at night. Right. So those are some other key things that help me as a, a clinician mm -hmm. narrow in on what type of hormonal imbalance we might be seeing. With those, those women also can have something very important like breakthrough bleeding mm -hmm. or spotting. Mm -hmm. That's something we didn't touch on. But spotting right. is another really common abnormal symptom True. that women can experience throughout their menstrual right. cycle. And spotting often is another sign that there's not enough progesterone. Mm -hmm. If we have enough progesterone to keep our uterine lining mm -hmm. intact until, you know, 14 days after ovulation mm -hmm. when everything drops, then we, we won't have spotting. Mm -hmm. But breakthrough bleeding spotting at like day 20 or day 17 or here and there like preceding the period actually starting, right. again, signs that there's not enough progesterone. Mm -hmm. So what, what do we do? to help with progesterone. Generally in reproductive age women, I don't actually give progesterone mm -hmm. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Now I, I do prescribe bioidentical hormones, mm -hmm. but I really tend to use that for menopause mm -hmm. and or specific fertility issues. Mm -hmm. okay. But if it's just a progesterone type of deficit, I will use herbs and also acupuncture and mm -hmm. Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. I find those to be the most effective. Right. There's not a lot of dietary interventions to talk about when there's a progesterone deficit. Mm -hmm. um, really, I go right to herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. There's something called Vitex mm -hmm. or Chase Tree Berry. Mm -hmm. It's a very common herb. Right. And this actually stimulates FSH,